Hi, I'm Miss Hall, and this is lesson 0.4, function review. In this lesson, we're going to do three things. We're going to review mapping diagrams, function notation, and composition functions. We begin with mapping diagrams. So below I have a mapping diagram, which is two circles that map inputs to outputs. I'm going to label these x to y, also input to output. And we could also label this domain and range. You should remember that domain is the list of possible x values and range is all the possible y values. I'm going to clarify that. It doesn't have to be a list. Uh, the domain could be any value. Um, so the domain is possible x values and range is possible y values. So let's answer some questions. Does this diagram represent a function? Um, well, when we've seen enough of these, we could look and see that it does. Um, but if we don't remember how to read mapping diagrams, one thing I like to do is first write it as a table. Right? This is a table in disguise. So we have negative 3 goes to negative 1, negative 1 goes to negative 2, 1 goes to negative 1, and 2 goes to 0. Okay, so we're going to see, did any of the x values repeat? And they didn't. So it is a function. If any of the x values repeat, remember we'd see if they had the same y value, right? So does this diagram represent a function? Yes, it does. Identify the domain. So this domain of the function, again, is possible x values. And I'm going to list it because there are four possible x values for this function. Negative 3, negative 1, 1, 2. And I'm using set notation to say that's the set of numbers that represent the domain. Uh, for the range, there are three possible values, negative 2, negative 1, 0. See, I chose to put it um, from least to greatest, and now uh, we've got a list of the range. Uh, finally, uh, we have function notation where f of negative 1, so negative 1 is the input. So when negative 1 is the input, what is the output? And the output is negative 2. Right? Here is when negative 1 is the input, and the output is negative 2. We really wrote it as a table, negative 1 to negative 2. So the answer here is negative 2. Now up function notation. So here's an example of a function written in function notation. Uh, we pronounce the left side as f of x. Um, f is the name of the function. See, it's represented there. X is the input, what's going into the function. And then X squared plus 3 is the output or the rule. And now we have another function underneath it. G of X equals X minus 6 over 2. So now the name of the function is G. And we're going to evaluate the function G at a couple of different inputs. First one is G of 20. So we're going to rewrite this function with x being 20, so that is the input. And then we're going to simplify uh, or evaluate. So 20 minus 6 is 14. 14 divided by 2 is 7. Um, so I could write the answer of g of 20 is 7. In function g, when the input is 20, the output is 7. Do another example. g of 0 means when x is 0, Evaluate the function. 0 minus 6 is negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So g of 0 equals negative 3. Last up is function composition. And this is when we apply one function to the result of the other. You see you have two functions, f of x and g of x. And number 1 says f compose g of 5. To represent that in symbols, we've got this f open circle g of 5. You could also see this represented as f of g of 5. So f of g of 5. We're going to work from the inside out because it's really saying evaluate f, the function f, for whatever g of 5 is. So I'm going to evaluate g of 5 first. And g of 5 will be 5 squared plus 1. g 
g of 5 is going to be 25 plus 1, which is 26. So I can rewrite. Uh, this is f of 26. In other words, that's what's being asked here. So f of 26 is going to be 26 plus 2. f of 26 equals 28. Um, if I wanted to, I could say, okay, so f of g of 5 or f composed g of 5 equals 28. And we'll do that again, um, but now you'll see that we have g composed f of 5. Um, so I'm going to do a color coding. So we have g of whatever f of 5 is. And so let's start with f of 5 going to be 5 plus 2. Therefore, f of 5 is going to be 7. Then g of 7 is going to be 7 squared plus 1. g of 7 equals 50. Therefore, I can write uh, g of f of 5 equals 50. Here we have f composed g of 2. So in other words, we have f of g of 2. We begin with g of 2. So g of 2 equals 2 squared plus 2, uh, oops, plus 3 times 2 minus 10. G of 2 equals 4 plus 6 minus 10. G of 2 equals 10 minus 10, 0. So now I have f of 0 equals negative 3 times 0 minus 15. So f of 0 equals 0 minus 15 is negative 15. In other words, I could rewrite the original problem as f composed g of 2 equals negative 15.